Yes, of course. Fall. Autumn. My favorite season. The leaves changing colors. Pumpkin spice lattes. Halloween just around the corner. Love it all. I know it's not the same season everywhere in the world. Sorry, New Zealand, Australia, etc. But you ever find yourself drawing characters, but you don't know how to draw clothing or details? Well, here is the right challenge for you. So, we're doing a fall-themed challenge to learn about clothing. How to join the challenge! So, check out this Pinterest board here titled Med's Fall Fashion Challenge. On this Pinterest board, I also included some gumroads that I have that might be helpful for something like this challenge. I plan on doing 30 studies with paint and color within 10 days, which is three per day. If you want to do more in your own way, then go for it. Then you can post your work on Instagram using the hashtag MedsFallFashionChallenge so we can all see what you share. I'm sure you could do that on Twitter too, but I don't go there, so I probably won't see it. I think there's about over 100 different uh, fall-themed outfits here, so if you want to do all 100, go for it. The purpose of this is, well, to have something to do if you find yourself staring at a blank page more often than not, but regarding studying, the purpose is to further the understanding of how to design outfits for characters by analyzing and studying from reference. Also, to try to develop a sense of the fall color palette, oranges, yellows, tans, beige, etc. Also, to explore new styles to add to your tool belt. I've also made a style inspiration board. If you want to study some styles related to character design, clothing, and fashion, a um, lot of good stuff here, a lot of abstract things. It could be really fun. You might end up learning something really cool. Both of these Pinterest boards are linked in the description. I'll be sharing five tips with you to help you with this kind of challenge, characters, poses, clothing, folds, wrinkles, etc. later in this video. So what are the rules for this challenge? Ha! There are no rules. If you want to start this in January, who cares? Do it! Want to do only one drawing? Fine, that's great. Want to draw from the same reference in multiple styles? Nice, do that. You don't like my Pinterest board? Cool, make your own. You don't have to color or paint it. You could do sketchy, loose gesture lines, or you could do refined lines. It doesn't matter. As long as you do something, I'm sure you'll learn from it if you choose to do this challenge. I'm personally going to do three a day with color and paint, totaling 30 for 10 days. So here are the five tips to help you. But before that, these tips will only work if you hit the like button for this video. You know, I don't make the rules, it's just how it is. Oh, oh, there, there it is. Now, when doing these studies, here's what you gotta pay attention to. Tip number one. This one's related to posing. Some people have a hard time with drawing poses. They might say that their characters feel stiff and lifeless. Well, try this out. When you have your reference open, lower the opacity. Okay, what is it? 65%, there are two very specific lines I want you to look for. First line being the shoulder line. Notice the angle it's at, right? Notice that it's not perfectly horizontal. So those are the shoulders. The second line will be the hip line. Now, this one is obscured by the clothing, but we can pretty much guess that the angle is probably gonna be parallel with this. And I'm gonna eyeball the hip line to be right about there. By doing that, if you were to take them over here, so this first line is obviously not horizontal, it's definitely aimed down. Now it doesn't have to be perfect when you're doing the study, um, but just getting used to the idea of it being at an angle one way or the other. And then we can take the other one and angle it accordingly. What that does is instead of the shoulder line and the hip line being parallel, causing a kind of direct straight line in the middle, what this does is it bends that line. Okay, this kind of causes a gesture. From here, what you can do is start mapping out where all the other things go. You can also look at where things are aligned. For example, the, the first knee is kind of aligned with this, but the other one is more aligned with um, further out from the hip and it kind of lines up with the shoulder there. So what we can do is make a straight line here, put a circle for the knee. And again, the uh, other knee is not too close this way. We're gonna push it out further like this so it lines more with the outside part of the shoulder. And then put a line there, right? And then we can say that the lower leg kind of does something like that. And then this one, I like to sort of do a shorthand of, um, of the lower leg with a sort of bow out like that. That's because of the uh, calf muscle. Let's move this over here. Now I know I did the legs too far apart, but we could change that later. I'm gonna put in a little circle for the rib cage. And then usually this line will point to where the head is, so. 
about right there. So I like to do studies like this of just figuring out what these angles are doing at the hips as well as the shoulders. That's so we could actually figure out the angle of the shoes there or the feet. Um, and then just very basic stick figures on here just to know that from this line to this, it's not perfectly straight down. It's not perfectly 45 degree angle, but it is somewhere in between. So I'm going to put a circle here and the elbow is usually about uh, around where the rib cage is sort of ending, but not quite. So if the rib cage is doing that, we can sit the elbows right there. Right. And then once you have your sort of wireframe or mannequin, sure you could start adjusting things. I'm going to go ahead and say the excuses that I'm trying to explain it at the same time as drawing it. Um, but that seems more like the reference. Now we can lower the opacity of that and start dressing the wireframe up. And there we have a fairly believable pose that does not feel lifeless. Um, now I could probably push and exaggerate things a little bit more. I actually already did this one earlier. As you can see here, I definitely push the proportions and stylize things a bit for more kind of like uh, feature animation kind of style. So remember, when in doubt, look for the shoulders, look for the hips, everything else should fall into place, especially with practice. At first it might be difficult, but keep trying. I promise you, you'll get the hang of it. Tip number two, layers. So one thing that you kind of need to think about is how clothing is layered. Now we have the jacket here, all right, we could say that that's kind of layer one on top of everything, right? And then we have the scarf, which is just below that. We could say that's layer two. And then from there we have the shirt, the belt, and the pants. And that would be layer three. And then the shoes. So the reason I did that is if you just break down the major groups of the layers, so jacket on top, scarf below that, shirt below that, pants, etc. It it'll become much easier for you to process the uh, the actual study because if otherwise we sit there and we're trying to do a study of this and we get really caught up in the details of this jacket, you know, making that first line and then the the lapel looking thing, then the zippers, and then we get really caught up in these details and. It just starts to get kind of confusing. It it works, but there's I think a better method. So this method, this this here, I tried to go straight for the detail, but the next method I want to show you is treating it with layers. So I could also say that it's kind of like treating it with um, shapes or groups. So here we have our mannequin. If we just take a quick peek at the layers that we separated, and we just study that real quick, it's much easier to get the big shapes in as layers on top of each other. Layers, groups, value grouping, materials. Get those out of the way first, and then we can detail them later. So the idea is to start with the big shapes and then subdivide those big shapes with the details that are supposed to go there. From there, we could turn that off. Now, I don't always actually do that in terms of uh, blocking it in, but when I'm thinking about these kinds of processes, my mind sort of groups things together like this. So get in the practice of simplifying groups like that so that you're not too caught up in unnecessary details. Now we can get in there and then really start breaking things down. Now I'm doing the medium shapes, not really the small details just yet, just the overall medium stuff. I can already tell that this side should be more, more to the right. Um, I kind of pushed it in this way too much. Anyway, so I've, I think that's a good start. You could probably get in there and start detailing things. I'll probably redo this one because I feel like it was a bit rushed for the demo. That leg should definitely go more in that way with that negative space. And that belt line should be lower. Cool. Tip number three, simplifying folds and drapes. So let's take a look at some folds here. Now this is going to be really important to pay attention to uh, regarding folds, stuff like this. It's almost very sculptural kind of 
having this nice quality of, of form, volume, and believability. So one way to handle this is to kind of sit there and do a quick wireframe over the, the folds and actually analyze what's happening in terms of um, the form here. So I would, I would kind of just do an, an outline like this and maybe simplify a couple of these shapes, but then do a wireframe of like dips, low dips, uh, high peaks, and then kind of just trace it and internalize and try to remember that, you know, there's parts of the cloth that fold in, some of them go really thin. And I recommend this exercise for any kind of thing where you want to understand form. So by doing this, it really helps you realize how much detail in terms of how much of the folds are happening as kind of tube-like qualities that have a round cylindrical form language to it. And by doing that also, it kind of helps you group together different, I guess, clumps. So, you know, you have a, a tube thing here, another tube thing there, another tube here that kind of splits off into two tubes. And just by analyzing that information, we can go over here and let's say we drew the whole thing and we get to the part where we draw the sleeve. I could say the wireframe of the elbow does something like this, lower the opacity, and then I can draw that cuff there and then kind of lay in that tube. That first tube goes all the way around. And yeah, I can indicate the, the wireframe there, but then the next tube and then the other tube definitely squished here, then it splits into two, then over here, it kind of gets overlapped by a tube up top and it kind of does a little loop-de-loop -loop thing there. And so when you go to kind of render it, since you studied the, the form of it, the topology, using a wireframe, uh, you almost don't even have to look at the reference and say, well, I know that the light is from the top right. Let's go ahead and select the lighter color. And the tubes that are facing the light are gonna receive, well, light. And we zoom out, it starts to feel like a piece of clothing that has folds in it. And you can kind of get in there and paint in little shadows and the actual values that are there. But the form is the most important part and analyzing the form will help you get there. All right, so that's for folds. Let's talk about things that are kind of draping. And by that, I mean, if you have a point of tension here and a point of tension there, and there's a cloth hanging between them, there's a sort of draping quality uh, that happens like, well, drapes. And that's pretty much happening here. There's a point of tension there, point of tension here, and the clothing kind of just falls to gravity. To really study it, I would do the same exact thing we did here with the folds. Uh, we would analyze the forms and try to understand what's actually happening with the points of tension. But I'm going to actually throw a curveball here and say, instead of doing what we did here, I want to introduce another way of handling folds and drapery and stuff like that. And that's to do shorthand. So all of this that we just did, I recommend studying it slowly like this with form to understand the volume of it. But after you've done that, if you're just doing a, a sketch or a study, I would see where the point of tension is, let's say here, and just... What I like to do is do this, right? And it's definitely way stylized. It's really scribbly. Uh, but in this case, that to me is very decent shorthand that describes that same thing. And let's say we did that over here. All I would do is just use those as like places to shade and then put our highlights like above them, right? So that would be the shorthand for the folds. Uh, same thing with the drapes. So point of tension here, point of tension there, and I would just do something like this. And then I can easily just make up the shadows and stuff. Now that's definitely something that comes after you've done enough studies to make this look believable, but it's a neat trick to simplify uh, folds and clothing using shorthand techniques. So let's try that without tracing it. And there we have it. Stylized, very loose, a little bit more ex expressive than trying to be super accurate. And that's kind of the style I prefer to do when I'm just doing quick studies. Give it a shot. Tip number four, details. I wanna do another curveball here. It's somebody's birthday. We gotta bake a cake. Let's just make a cake real quick. All right, we got there, our, our fun cake. 
<sighs> All right, there's our cake. What's that you say? It's kind of boring. There's nothing on it. Exactly. I agree. Well, let's just give it a plate, you know. And while we're at it, let's put some frosting on it. And we'll kind of just maybe put it around the edge here. And maybe we have some on the bottom. Cool. All right, we're done. Or are we? First, the big shape was the cake itself. The medium shapes are the shapes I just put down for frosting. It's still missing something. We have the big, we have the medium. We're missing the small. Small shapes are super important to act as the cherry on top. Literally, in this case, we're gonna put a cherry on top to really bring it all together. It's not enough. I think we should still add more smaller details, maybe some sprinkles. These small details, the sprinkles, the cherry on top, make the cake feel complete. Moving on, so why did I show that? Well, those small details like the cherry on top, the sprinkles, that bring everything together is something I think is overlooked with a lot of detailing in character designs and costuming and clothing. So let's just take a look at the specifics of the cherries on top and details would, would often be overlooked. So first we could say, well, obviously these buttons definitely are like the cherry on top. You know, they're very small details and they bring this whole thing together. Without them, it would just feel weird. It would just feel kind of bland and empty, right? So there's that, we have decals and embroidery, more buttons, uh, the necklace, that kind of stuff. But the stuff that might get ignored and overlooked is gonna be even closer. So if you look at this stuff here, how there's a sort of uh, texture happening on the cloth there and the material, that I would consider is a detail kind of akin to the, the sprinkles. Of course, it's not exactly the same, kind of comparing apples to oranges here, but the idea is there. Without these subtleties, we're going to be missing a lot of information about the texture. So look for these kinds of details. The zipper here, without the zipper, we'd be missing that cherry on top. Some wrinkles over here, whatever that is, right? So when you have your reference open, do a quick scan, zoom in, kind of ask yourself, where are the main details that I might overlook? Stuff like this. Now, it might be tempting to just draw your thing, uh, your study like that, and just kind of paint it all in, in one shape. But if you take the time and actually put in these specifics, they act as a sort of contrast point, because here we have high density detail of information against low density detail. Still detail, but that kind of thing makes points of interest uh, call attention to itself. Now, same thing over here, more buttons, these very specific wrinkles. And of course, personally, I wouldn't go in there in my study and actually do every single one. I would kind of like see what's going on and make up my own version. I know there's kind of like these triangle shapes that are uh, scattered about and they have denser areas and other, they have, there's areas of big shapes. And then I would kind of like make up my own. So. What does that look like? Got the two buttons. And I'd sort of say, okay, well, there's information there. I'll be sure not to forget that. I kind of do an abstraction of what's going on there. And be kind of loose and fun with it. So that's kind of how I would handle it. It's a bit crude and rough here, but that's the idea. Another detail is these little button things, but also the stitching. Stitching is really important because it's not always on all clothing, but when you do show it, it kind of just acts as a sort of recognizable cue to us to know, to know that it's like um, sewn together and it's familiar in terms of clothing. Shoelaces, you know, don't forget to do these little things where the shoelaces go in and then try to pay attention to how they're actually crisscrossing over. Is it one going horizontal, then the rest are kind of crisscrossing that way? Is it an X shape or is it just a V shape? Uh, and then this thing, the little bunny ear part of that, you know, look at the shape of it. And when you're doing the study, you don't have to sit there and kind of get the exact angle of everything. Well, you could, what I like to do is just kind of see the overall shape of it and then use that. And that's, that's my shoelace for that part. Cool. That concludes the portion about the keeping in mind the concept of it being a cherry on top. Now the final quick tip that I wanna share is regarding proportion. This is the stuff that if you play around with a lot, you get far more style, far more 
uh, interesting shapes and negative shapes. So let's just kind of analyze this uh, real quick. So if we just zoom out and simplify, we could say that, well, this is just a rectangle. It's slightly askew. And you got these kind of parentheses shapes there. You got a V shape there. Uh, oval or egg for the uh, head. And then you got these sticks, these rectangles here for the legs or the jeans, and then the shoes. Now, I could try to figure out the, the ratio of this and try to kind of get that exactly in terms of the rectangle. I could put the V shape there, the parentheses here, uh, the egg shape, the two rectangles, and the shoes. And we can compare it. Yeah, it's close enough. Uh, but the opportunity to, to push those shapes is what I think is important which you always have. So let's start with that rectangle again, that kind of skewed rectangle. Now, what if we actually took that and made it really wide? We're gonna have to extend the canvas for this one. And then we could take these rectangles and make them really skinny. It's definitely more cartoony, but you know, once you get the hang of it, you'll, you'll be able to play with this more. And then we have the feet, which we could actually make really big. But I'm not too concerned with the details or anything yet, just the overall bounding box shape. And then we have the parentheses for the arms and then the oval for the head. The head I'm gonna keep the same size for this uh, attempt. Got the hair, then you got the V shape and the slant of the shoulders. And if we just go ahead and bring our reference back up to full opacity, we can now use this as our guide for a more stylized pushed shape for the character design. And here's where I want to talk about negative space and silhouette. So here we could say that the silhouette kind of has its own, let's say, abstract quality to it. Here's what I mean. If we have the silhouette here, it, it peaks here, dips into a valley there, has a plateau, then it peaks again, and then it goes at a right angle, so on and so forth. What you don't see here is the pants really clung tight to the leg this, the shoe doing something like that, and like that. This is boring. There's no negative space happening here. It's a great opportunity to push the silhouette like this, right? So for our stylized thing, we could see what's there in terms of peaks and valleys. And what if we took that and just pushed it out further, right? And then we, we kept the leg there, then push the shoe out and then stuff like that. This negative space becomes really interesting to look at, right? So if we do that for our study here, I'm gonna make sure that, that the pants do not line up with the leg perfectly. I wanna push that outward and make sure it's giving us a nice negative space there. I'm gonna push that part of the shoe out and same thing for the other side. Now, in the reference, it does something a little bit like this. I'm gonna really just push that out. All right, so now we got all of our shapes exaggerated in there. And I think that's a pretty fun start for our design far more stylized way more like cartoony um, stuff like that definitely try messing around with that kind of idea by pushing shapes I can show an example of how I did that in one of the earlier studies that I did so definitely not as obvious and cartoony as the example I just did but if we look at the proportions here I definitely made um, the legs a little bit longer really focused on that negative space, pushed it a little, about, a little bit out further, and I beefed up the jacket a little bit. And that's just me experimenting with that whole idea. Anyway, those are my main tips for going forward with this kind of challenge. Give it a shot, I hope that was helpful. Be sure to use the hashtag MedsFallFashionChallenge to see what other people are posting. If you're interested in my older challenges, be sure to check this out here. Or if you wanna to listen to me ramble on and podcasts, check out this playlist here. Be sure to subscribe and thank you for watching.